What's up, everybody? Drew here. Welcome to the Photo Booth 101 University podcast. Usual co-host, Tyler Hans. we got a special, 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 special guest, my man Naveen from Holland. Not Poland, not Germany, Holland. My man, how do you how do you say your 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 photo booth company name, man? I, I was kind of butchering it off uh, off the air, but how do you how do you pronounce it? Don't worry about it, man. First of all, I appreciate to be here. Um, you pronounce it as a uh, photo booth, kind of mm. similar like the English word photo booth. Uh, it's kind of like a play on the word a photo booth, and uh, booth in Dutch kind of means something like dug or something like that in a, in a uh, playful manner. So it uh, just clicked with me and uh, uh, I took upon the name and everybody I speak about it uh, says, hey, it's very, it's a very good name. It rings with me. And that's a big reason why I booked you. Love it. You know, when I hear the name, it's like powerful. Like it's like an emphasis on the boof. Boof. Yeah. Man. I agree. It's like say, say it with your chest. It's boof. Say it with your chest, bro. Yeah, man. And, and for those that don't know, man, Naveen is a real one. You guys, it's 4 a.m. where he's from. You know, so there, there's yep. levels to the grind and you're grinding right now, man. So um, really quick, I just want you to, if you don't mind, just introduce yourself. Um, you know, my first question for you is what made you want to start a business? You know, I kind of wanted to get everyone kind of familiar with your journey and, and whatnot. So yeah. what was the, what was the journey like? All right. So that's a, that's a very inter interesting question, but before, um, before we dive into that, Let's all show some appreciation and some love like this video right now. And then we're going to help you guys uh, with this infotainment. So um, it started pretty, uh, pretty, a pretty long time ago when my, uh, it started with my parents. They were both entrepreneurs. They uh, owned their own shops. And we're talking about 20 years ago. Uh, they got chewed up, spit out by the system, lost their jobs and started a business a store um and that didn't work out and i was uh, helping around in the store picking up on the little things like uh, how many hours they were working um, the attention and detail they put into the work the, the dedication the service they provided to their customers and that really stuck with me and i think that also formed me as a person um but when it didn't work out for them i for the longest time i had this feeling like uh, no I am never going to have this insecurity of, of losing uh, my own my own stuff. So I'm never going to start for myself and look at where we are. I started my own thing. Um, and it kind of, it's it's really stupid because I've known about photo booths for such a long time. Um, uh, a few years ago, or, or shall I say at the end of 2022, I was at a wedding of a cousin. And I was with my wife, we were both dressed up and uh, we were feeling it. And as we walked through the hallway, we saw this mirror booth, big ass mirror booth, beautiful. It was, uh, there was, a, I think there was a TV screen built in and it was giving you uh, uh, interactions for, for example, for a smile piece, it was doing a countdown. For that time, I, I thought it was pretty advanced and I was really impressed. So I thought about myself, okay, this mirror booth is pretty big, it's pretty heavy there should be a way to do this easier and uh, much more efficient. And also the booth was unmanaged. So there was nobody uh, attending the booth. So I just went online and I started, I started researching. And, I, and when I start researching, I go for months and months of researching. That's how I found your channel. And uh, that's how I, I built my own photo booth. Um, for you guys that haven't seen the video, Drew is probably gonna link this video go watch it if you want to get started that's the way i started i built my own photo booth i'm not handy at all i'm tech savvy but i cannot work my my way around tools mm -hmm. i started and um we're now one year and three months in and we're killing it man we're killing it i'm getting uh um, compliments from every customer i i talk to every friend every colleague every uh um uh um yeah a venue owner they all say they all say when they see me, ah, oh, I heard about you. I saw you online. I saw you on TikTok. Um, keep it up. Keep it up. You're doing good. And um, that's kind of how I rolled into it. Awesome, man. Love. It. Cool. Yeah. My my follow up question was how long you've been in business, but yeah, you said about a year, right? 
Yeah, it's uh, one year and three months now. And it, uh, it, uh, like I said, it kind of started uh, by the end of 2022. And um, this is also maybe something good to understand for the viewer. Um, I didn't start right away. I, I started researching, like I said, for months and months. What, I'm, what, I'm, uh, what do I have to buy? Uh, how much money do I have to invest? Um, all in all, I think I invested maybe 500 to 750 euros. Let's say 500 to 750 dollars is, is pretty much the same. Wow. Um, the most, most of the cost went into the iPad. I started researching which, which software best suits my needs. Um, and after I built my own, my own photo booth, then it's time to start uh, proofing that your ID has, has some, some uh, validity to it. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, um, bringing the photo booth everywhere I went to, to family events. Uh, and I started making pictures. Um, and we were, just, we were just having fun with it. And uh, uh, meanwhile, discovering, okay, this is the optimal distance you have to stand. Uh, you have to uh, take into account the lighting of the room. So as I was proving to myself that this idea is going to work, I was also testing and learning and teaching myself on uh, on what, what flaws are into the system. And um, after that, I just waited for the first opportunity I got to, to, um, to put my product out there into the wild. And uh, that was, uh, I started or I announced that we were going to start on January 1st. And I had my first booking two days later. I know Tyler has a question for you, but uh, I do want to ask you, you know, just the ballpark, you've been in business about a year. If you don't yeah. mind sharing with the, the, the viewers, I know they're interested. Um, how much did you make, man, your first year, roughly? Okay, uh, that's a very difficult question to answer because... Um, for the first six months of the year, I was uh, I was not really um, focusing on on the revenue that I got because uh, it was mostly uh, unregistered. Uh, because I was still, for my for my um, own understanding, I was still testing the product. Um, and in the second half of the year, um, I bought a professional photo booth. I finally saved up enough money. I got the right opportunity at the right time, and. It kind of exploded from from that point on. So actually, the from the last six months of of last year, I I netted somewhere between ten and twenty k. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's somewhere in that region. Oh yeah, awesome. yeah, man, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, <clears throat> so now that you've been in a business for over a year, you know, statistic wise, what is your like? obviously what's your go-to favorite events to do uh, or what events do you do the most? Like, do you do, what's your go-to the weddings? Do you do a lot of sweet 16s, you know, birthdays? What is it that you do? Oh, I love that question. Um, first of all, there's kind of a cultural difference between the U S and uh, Europe. I think um, holidays such as uh, Halloween or graduation, they're not really that big. Uh, and um, second of all, we, kind of have uh, the, the, the Dutch culture. And I'm also part of the Indian, West Indian culture. So that those are like two different worlds apart. And uh, I love the Indian culture. It's uh, getting me a lot of business. And uh, the, the event types that I love the most are weddings, Indian weddings, and, um, and birthday parties, of course. Uh, I don't care if it's in a, at a house party or in a big venue. Uh, I enjoy them both. Um, but the the chaos and the excitement of a wedding that's unmatched i love it absolutely yeah we we do a lot of indian weddings too there's a lot of them over here in new jersey yeah um and they're a blast man we have such yeah. a good time the dancing the cultural dancing yep. and stuff like that and yep. then after when they go to the photo booth and use it it's just it's an experience yeah. man i love it yeah and uh, there, also one thing to understand about indian weddings they're not one day they're spread out over two weeks and they're usually a minimum of four days at a venue so those are big big events and there that means that there's lots of opportunity for you as an entrepreneur to uh, find find a foothold and book multiple days for one client okay so then let me like talk about it because uh now that you're saying the differences like what 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 
other differences can you think of and what other similarities can you think of? Because obviously, Tyler, Drew, and I are like USA based. Um, we do di yeah. here, uh, deal with different cultures. Like for us, the Hispanic culture is really big here in Los Angeles. Yep. Um, we deal with a lot of them. So sweet 16s, quinceañeras, those are like really mm -hmm. big. What what kind of differences and similarities would you say you have with the USA and, and Holland? That's a very difficult question for me to uh, to answer because I have almost no experience with, with, with US uh, events. But judging from what I've heard you guys talk about in previous episodes, uh, I would say that... Um, our events, and I'm mainly talking about the, the like the Indian ones. They are way more chaotic, and uh, it feels like the, uh, the 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 Dutch and and uh, U.S. style um, events are far more structured, and um, it's also kind of frowned upon, um, at least for me, um, to be at the the event. Uh, as as a supplier, let's say for example, if I'm in food, if I'm doing the catering, then it's logical for me to be there because I have to serve people food. But for a service like a photo booth, it's kind of it kind of it's kind of in a weird space. Some people they say, yeah, stay with us, have have fun. Uh, but as a professional, I just don't want to be there. Uh, I want to have the, the 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 client enjoy their time in their private space. I don't know how how is that in in the, in the U.S. Is it is it kind of similar? I love I love that, and I want to go back to what you said earlier, where you said that you saw the mirror booth for the first time, and there was no attendant yeah. there. Yeah. At least in New Jersey, and I don't know if Drew and Hans could talk for me on this one. I've never seen a mirror booth that was just dropped off and left alone because of how big it is and a chance for it to fall over and bash on the floor, crack all over the place. Every booth that I've seen that was a mirror booth was had someone there looking over it. Um, Drew Hans, is is it any different in California? I know we've talked about it in the past about the mirror booths, but um, as far as the, obviously the digital photo booth, you know, the, the iPad one, um, you know, that's obviously drop off. You could drop that off, let it, you know, leave it there, come back. But yeah. I mean, guys... well, to, to answer your question, Naveen, I, I think I think most people want prints and they want an attendant. But like what I've done is like I've kind of structured my rental prices to where like it almost doesn't matter what they want. I, I'm giving them kind of the deal, the deal and the offer, the package of the drop off is kind of turning mm -hmm. that want prints and they want an attendant to no attendant. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you yeah. guys, can all, we can all agree, right? Most people want you yep. to stay. They expect you to stay, but you know, I know you, you know, Hans for sure is doing the drop off. And um, I actually tell my clients, like, it's actually better to not have me here, even though like, I'll make a joke if they're like, oh, is there going to be an attendant? I'm like, oh, I know. I, I, I know I'm going to be the life of the party, but it's actually a better experience for you guys because I'm some stranger. And if your cousin and his wife want to kiss and get touchy touchy in the booth, they may not do it if I'm there. So, yep. and I also explained to the customers, I was like, we can have an attendant, but it's going to be an extra fee because I have to pay someone to be there, which it, IE is going to be me. <laughs> but yep. um, yeah, Hans, what's your, what's your, what's your take on that, man? Like on, on his question. No, I mean, I, I think, I think uh, I didn't even know that that was a thing in the Indian culture where like, it's kind of like give them their privacy. I like that. Cause now I think about it, like, man, selling the drop-offs to this, you know, it type of event, like it's super easy. Like, Look, yeah. man, I don't want to be there and you don't want me to be there. So the drop off is like the perfect match. I mean, yep. you're crazy not to do the drop off if you're dealing with those type of like uh, events or, you know, cultures. Like, I mean, I would love that. Um, I, I get I, I do get a lot of clients that, you know, want me to be there. Like, oh, how does the prints work if you're not there? It's like, that's the thing. You don't get prints. But Tom's like, look just choose like your five favorite like like photos and then go to a CVS and then, you know, they're going to charge you like maybe four dollars. Like it's, it's super yep. easy to just, you know, get your own prints it. And most people have like a, a printer at home. So it's like, I mean, do you really want them? Um, but I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy. I didn't know that that it was that different. I'm, I'm glad that um, Naveen told us that uh, drop offs are actually kind of like easy to sell over there. Yeah. yeah. That, I got a total, I, I know this isn't a question I like gave you, but you brought it up the Indian wedding, the four day wedding. You've been a part of a four-day wedding where the each day you had a photo booth there, or how does that work? Is there just one day that the booth stays, or, or how does that work? Um, I've been part of, I think, a few weddings. Um, 
it's basically uh, like any other booking. You just make uh, uh, an agreement that you have to show up at uh, specific days, at specific times, and that's it. Hmm. It's easy as that. Dude, it's I've never I, I mean I've heard of the four day weddings. I've never been a part of it, but um, yeah. that's interesting. That's interesting. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean I, I I'm, I'm sure people want to know a little bit more about your business. Uh, I know we talked about the digital, but do you offer prints as well, or are you just strictly digital only? Okay, so I structured my business at the moment to be digital only. And the reason for that, the most important reason for that is time. Uh, I don't have a lot of it. I work two jobs. Uh, my end goal is to make sure that my wife doesn't have to work anymore. And in order to get there, I have to work a lot more and I have to earn a lot more. So I have to invest. And the best way that I can spend my time is with her. And if I have to be in a, at an event, um, which I've only done once so far, um, I'm going to charge the, uh, the customer. So for me at the moment, the only thing I offer is digital only. And um, yeah, I've done almost 100 events now, I think. And I've booked about 30 more for the future. So there is a big market for drop-off only. And oh, I believe it's the future. And even if uh, a client refuses and says, yeah, but I really want prints, there's still an opening to uh, to kind of to kind of sell your way uh, to the drop off or just accept it as it is. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. Like you said in, uh, in, in, in earlier podcasts, uh, it's about the volume. And if you can consistently keep up the volume, yeah, you will never feel it. You'll never feel that, uh, that drop offs are uh, something that you have to uh, explicitly sell to make money. So it's, it's for me, it's a, it's a golden opportunity. Love it, man. Yeah, I know Hans has a question for you, but uh, real quick, I gotta sneak this one in here. Uh, just, just trying to extract as much info from you, brother. Yeah, can no, no don't worry about that information. How don't are worry. you getting, bro? How are you getting your leads? Um, okay. Yeah, leads, and then also like your marketing strategy. Oh, I love this question. I love this question. First off, uh, I'm I have a history in marketing and sales. So I studied marketing. So this was finally my time to uh, implement my knowledge into my own business. But before I tell you guys wh what it is, uh, I want you viewers to stay until the end because at the end I will make a very big announcement exclusive to this podcast. So right. stay, stick to the end. Okay, back to the question. Uh, how do I do my marketing and how do I, I do my sales funnel? Um, actually, one thing to understand is, is that we live in a digital era. We have so many platforms, uh, so many tools, and um, as a user of those tools, it can be very challenging to find a way to uh, read up on your emails, check your website, uh, check your TikTok, make a post for Instagram. And the only way to manage all that is to combine it. And that's what I did. I created an Instagram page, I created a Facebook page, created a YouTube page, created a TikTok page, created a website. Did it all by myself. You can find it all on YouTube, on Google, on how to do those things. And after I started those pages, I filled it with content and I went into the settings of each and every uh, tool. And there are possibilities to link uh, your TikTok to your Instagram, your Instagram to your website, your website to Google, Instagram to Google. And I've, I've kind of funneled it down that if you start somewhere, you will always end up on my website, fill in the contact form. The contact will form will always be sent to my email. I check my email every 10 to 15 minutes. And that way I can always ensure that my speed of service is superb. If a client uh, tries to contact me or they DM me, I get a notification on my screen. I can always react within like the first 15 minutes and close the deal. Love that, yeah. I like wow. how structured that is, man. I mean, wow, that's yeah, that's what I was gonna say, like structure pyramid, man. That's uh, yeah. yeah. And wow. to elaborate even a little bit more for, uh, further, it's it's still not where I wanted to be because, uh, like I said, I've created everything this myself. Um, it's um, in the future, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend big on creating a professional website, and I'm gonna outsource it to a professional because I want a planning tool on my website which I can link to Google. 
So, uh, and in turn to, to Facebook and Instagram. So if you start in Facebook, Instagram, or Google, you can already enter your info in those spaces and it will get, it'll get funneled down to your website and, the, uh, and you'll, be, you'll be able to close the deal even faster before even talking to a client. What's your, what's your number one way for leads though? Like if you had to just sit and like, hey, this is bringing in the most money. That's a very interesting one. I'd say TikTok, Instagram. TikTok for the views because I'm reaching crazy amounts of viewers. But the interaction is, uh, is in my opinion, a little bit lower. Um, I, this is an assumption. It's very dangerous, I know. I assume that most of the TikTok audience uh, um, um, visits the website eventually. And uh, um, my viewers on Instagram or followers on Instagram, they just DM me and I pick it up from there. Well, well, lucky, you, lucky you, you're going to have TikTok longer than us. We'll probably have ours banned in about two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, but people people sleep on TikTok. I've been telling these guys, like, man, TikTok, we've, we've been getting a lot of leads, a lot of bookings from TikTok. And it's a lot of it's from hashtags, man. You yep. know, hashtags, yep. also tagging tagging the venue. When we go to a venue, we tag the venue. Um, yes. Yeah, man. I love that, man. Thank, thank you. Thank you for that info. <laughs> Yeah, I have I've one last tip about TikTok, um, even though you guys might lose it in a, in a couple of months. I just, in the, in the beginning, I did this a lot. Uh, to get my account rolling, uh, I would identify a, a good post. Uh, let's say, for example, if a, if a post got 5,000 views in like the first 24 hours, I'd dump $10 worth of, uh, of promotional uh, uh, budget into, into my TikTok account. I'd, I'd automate the post on uh, on, a, on this kind of uh, advertising uh, um, uh, um, option within TikTok, and it would push out my my video to uh, the target audience, which was uh, ladies from the age of eighteen to, to forty four, and it would explode the views, and those views will lead to even more leads. Told you guys, so that's a very good tip. Oh my gosh. It's insane. I, I literally, we had this, I have the conversation with these guys like a couple of weeks ago. I it's it's us. taking the words yeah. right out of Drew's mouth, man. And what, what, what I do want to put here too, if you're doing these TikTok ads, um, I'm, I'm not sure how it is in your country, but like out here, if you create like a, an ad on your phone through the app, there is a fee. There's a big fee. Yeah. If you do it yeah. through your desktop, there's no fee because on the app, Apple's taking a cut and it's a big chunk. So if you're gonna do, yeah. it, do it, do it on your computer through through the uh, through TikTok.com, like the business suite, rather than doing it on your phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me let me let me jump into that because you can do it on your phone, but you have to use the web browser the of web your browser. phone. Yep. Don't don't use the app. No. Don't because use the app. Apple is gonna finesse you. Yeah. Yeah, man. Okay. Interesting. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. So you know, you talked about how you get your leads, where you get your leads from. Um, but what do you do to stand out? Obviously, there's probably other photo booth vendors around you. You have competitors, you know, around you. We don't consider them over here competitors. We try to work with other photo booth owners, try to maybe get leads from them. We give them if we're a double booked or triple booked or whatever. But what do you do to stand out from these other photo booth companies? So someone could say, like, I want to choose a uh, photo booth, you know, because they stood out to me rather than another photo booth company. Tyler, I love this question. So what I do to make myself stand out from the crowd is uh, consistently post on social media um, to make sure my content gets pushed out to as much people as possible so that I get that I always get the first chance to be booked. If they can't book me because I'm busy, I will give one to my competitors. I have a, a small network of, uh, of, of colleagues that I, uh, that I trust and um, uh, it's it's not that I get a fee or I just want the, the, the customer to be, to be served properly. And um, the, the same has happened to me because when they are overbooked, they send their leads back to me. Nice. So there is, there, there is competition, but there is also um, um, this, this scene of helping each other, which, which I really appreciate uh, because that's, that's a healthy environment for all of us to work in. And um, yeah. Um, there, there, there is a bit, uh, there is a small bit of competition. Yeah. I'm a competitive guy. I want to be number one. I want to be booked first. And if I'm fully booked, 
then I'll happily give my uh, my booking to a to a colleague. Yeah, man. You also you you all you know another thing I think you do to stand out is you're fast. You you said earlier you're checking your email every fifteen minutes. Yeah. I know yeah. some photo boothers that check it once a day. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. once a week. Once yeah. a week. And once a week. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I agree with you there, uh, with you there, Drew. Speed is very 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 important, uh, but also being very polite, being very uh, neat in in if you get the job, you have to work uh, properly. You have to uh, yeah. What I do is I always tape down every piece of cable that my eye can see, uh, and my uh, my friends have uh, sent me pictures of other parties where where you can see the cables. There are only like uh, taped down on like three three spots. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I always try to work as tidy as I can. Always polite. I always talk to the customer uh, uh, before on the day of the event and after the event. So kind of like after sales to ensure yeah, is everything gone all right? Are you happy with the service? What can I do better? And even if they have a complaint, I always make sure to give them something extra. So for example. Um, Let's say uh, there was a problem with the lighting and uh, something uh, broke or whatever. I'll always try and give them like a, a sweeter deal for, uh, let's say uh, you give us a second chance and I'll make sure you get 50% off or 75% off on, on the next booking or something like that. Hmm. And let's say, for example, everything does go as planned and everything's perfect. I always uh, extract a list of CSV, uh, uh, a CSV list of all the email addresses that are used and I mail them each one and I mail them, do you want to give us a five-star review on Google? And that, that is also a very good marketing tool because um, yesterday, uh, a, a very simple example. Yesterday, I got a, I got a uh, lead from uh, about two or three provinces away. It's like two states away for, uh, to say it in US terms. Um, and that uh, the lead tried to book us and uh, luckily were available, of course. Uh, but I'm now starting to spread my tentacles into other provinces, which are like two hour drives away or three hour drives away. And that's really a show that if you put in the time, the work and you market yourself, you stay polite, you work hard, you have good quality, uh, people will find you on their own merit. So for you to drive that distance, is that definitely like an upcharge, you know, because that's, you know, to get to those three hour and I could I could vouch with for you because uh, my business, we do that because I live in New Jersey, but we're also close to the city, New York. We're close to Pennsylvania. We're close to Connecticut. But those are sometimes three hour drives, two hour drives. And we yeah. definitely we definitely upcharge for that. If they really want us and we have to drive two hours, I'm going to charge you to get up there for two hours. And then that's not just counting going there. That's coming back home, too. Yeah, uh, yeah. you kind of answered your own question right there because I kind of do the same. Um, my situation, I'm luckily at the moment, I'm very blessed to live um, near the cities, the main four cities of Holland. So uh, Holland is kind of structured around the uh, working center, which are four cities. And I kind of live in right in the middle of those four cities. Mm -hmm. So 90% of my bookings come from those four cities. And if I have to travel outside of those, the big four cities, uh, I travel. Uh, I charge a uh, I charge a fee for for the uh, travel costs. Yeah, I'm glad. Uh, I think I might have. I, I'm glad I remembered you brought that up, Tyler, about the, the fees. Do you mind sharing your 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 company rates? Like, you know, are you doing packages or you know, are you doing all a cart? Like, what is your pricing like, and like what are, what is included for the rentals? Um, that's a very good question. Um, first of all, I, that's also a part of, of my, uh, um, uh, my, my operating and yeah, the, the way I operate, uh, it kind of comes back to the whole, po uh, politeness, kindness, uh, transparency is also a big thing. My prices are always visible on the website. And, uh, I kind of took a page, a large page out of your playbook. Um, I don't do a la carte. Um, I've thought about it, but, um, I kind of went with, um, with three packages and add-ons. So the, the way I've set it up for myself is, um, I work in two, two hour packages, four hour packages or all day packages might sound familiar. <laughs> and, um, of course the, the four hour packages get booked the most, 
um, and the all-day packages is a close second. Uh, and the, the two-hour packages are usually uh, for baby showers or gender reveal parties uh, or maybe a small birthday party. But for now, strangely enough, the, the, the all-day package is on a rise and it might even overtake the, uh, the, the, the middle package uh, pretty soon. And the, the way that I've chosen to, uh, of, uh, the reason why I've chosen to, to set it up like that is because I can now cater to uh, the smaller party. I can cater to a large party for uh, the four hour. And I, I give them even a better option to uh, rent the photo booth all day for about $100 more. And uh, the prices are two hours are $250, four hours are $350, and all day is $450. And uh, you can rent our beautiful backdrop for uh, $100 extra. And uh, uh, I offer prop tables for $50 uh, or 50 euros. Um, and that's maybe something that I will have to research a little bit more because that product is still somewhat not that popular. The, um, the, uh, the backdrops are very popular. I always keep it in my car. Where'd you get um, them? Where'd you get those backdrops? So I found this guy online. Um, he has a website. Um, um, in case you forget it, I'll I'll spit it out, uh, I'll spit it out for you. Here. Uh, can you link it? It's a uh, photobooth101.com. They're U.S. based. They uh, uh, I ordered I ordered today, and uh, it'll be here in Holland by the end of the week. So fast and reliable. Um, yeah, I'll make sure where, to plug you when I can. <laughs> where, do I, where, where do I send the endorsement check, man? That that commercial right there. That's that was cool. <laughs> um, but no, speaking of the backdrop. This one is on me. <laughs> speaking <laughs> of the backdrop. So I, I know you have a background in marketing. And on your website, I noticed the upgrade for the backdrop is 99.95 euro, right? Yep. Is there a psychology thing there that it's not yep. just 100, it's, nine, it's 0.95? The number psychologically, uh, uh, the number feels bigger, even though there's no difference. The 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 mathematical, the, the of numerical, the value is larger. There, there's four digits and a hundred as three. But for us as humans, psychologically, it feels way more than ninety nine dot five. It's it's super strange. Love it, yeah, yeah. Because we do deposit ninety nine dollar deposits, right, fellas? Yeah. Do you yeah, think we, do you think there's a difference of doing 99 versus 99.95 versus or is there is um, it the same? What's your opinion on that? I would say 99.95 would be more effective because uh, because of it's 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 more common. Hmm. It's ingrained to people's minds. Um, also, uh, to get back on the question about difference uh, between U.S. and 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 maybe Europe. Uh, I think a big difference is also the uh, the the, the con contractual approach of uh, of an agreement. Uh, I know that the U.S. is uh, is very keen on suing everybody left and right, um, mm -hmm. but we we don't really have that over here. Uh, a lawsuit can can take up to years uh, where, where where I'm from, uh, and it can be very costly. Uh, and and the gains are mostly not that worth it. And also our legislative system is not built that way. Um, we, as a, um, a supplier, have an obligation to the customer to provide terms and conditions uh, at least three times during the process. And if, uh, if you've done that and you've followed all the rules, um, uh, provided all the information, then uh, the contract is watertight, uh, so to speak. How do, you, how do you guys handle disputes then? Do you guys just throw hands or what? No, no, I know. Nope. What they do. Nope. Uh, let me let me take the one here, Naveen. The two the two men get pistols. They go back to back. They take ten nah. steps, turn around, and pop one. <laughs> nah, that's U.S. That's U.S. Yeah, that we is U.S. You're gonna go with that. You, bad. Bad. you, you, bad. you guys have knives. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh crazy. well. Now while we're on the topic um, of of like differences, um, because you did mention like busy seasons uh yeah. i don't know about for you but like here summer if in, in the u.s gets super busy like graduations is super busy halloween parties are crazy busy here so what 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 busy seasons do you guys have if you're saying graduations are not a big thing for for you guys 
Yeah, good question. I'm kind of super jealous that we don't have Halloween and graduation as big as you guys do, uh, because that's a lot of potential right there. Um, so now that I've been in business for about a year and a quarter of a year, so let's say 15 months now, um, I've noticed that um, the summer was a bit um, quiet, the, the, the summer holiday period, because people go abroad for vacation and stuff. Uh, um, there's a, uh, a two month window where everybody goes abroad for, for, um, uh, for vacations. And that's even in the workspace, yeah, you, you notice it immediately. People stop emailing and nobody's available. So uh, that kind of was a, a low period and uh, it might change this year, you never know. Um, I thought that uh, the, the start of the year was going to be very slow. I don't know why I thought it, but leads were coming in left, right and center. In the first week of January of, of this year, I, I, I already booked uh, uh, 10 events. That, that was crazy. And um, um, uh, October and November were very busy last year. I hope it will be the same this year. Um, so, yeah, I'd say um, from the um, last half of the, of, let's say, the last half of, of, uh, of September, I think until April, that's like the, the high season if, if I go based off my own statistics. And do you guys do uh, Christmas and New Year's is there as well? or? Yeah, but not as big as the U.S. because we have... Uh, and th this is already, this is another assumption. Um, uh, New Year's parties are usually at, uh, at families, uh, at, at home with, with your family or at a club and never at a venue or, uh, yeah, not, not, not celebrated in, 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 a, in a way like that. And Christmas is, is even worse because um, then you know for sure that everybody's going to be with their family or is going clubbing late at night. And um, the, the only way to capitalize on that moment is uh, with corporate events, Christmas Absolutely. parties. That's Absolutely. the only way for me to make money in that period. 100% agree, 100%. Uh, me, we, yeah. we got a ton of corporate events like that. It's just straight corporate. That's the yeah. best. Yeah, um, question for you, man. Uh, do you have any favorite memorable events like, no, not even events. Is there one event that stands out, one that you'll never forget? Like, let's just say your, yes. photo, booth, your photo booth career ended today and you're at your Hall of Fame speech and you had to give a speech about this one event, man. Like, tell us about it and why, why, why it was it memorable. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do you one better. I'm going to give you two. Perfect. Okay, um, let me start with the most important one. Um, so... Back, back to, I think, August, August of last year. Um, I was still working with my uh, DIY photo booth and I got, I got an email uh, from, a, from a lady at a bank, which I cannot specify due to reasons, uh, that she was interested in booking. And that was my first corp uh, corporate client. And I was like, shit, what I have to do? Because I cannot, I cannot show up with with my DIY uh, photo booth. So um, I, I scraped it together. I called the client. I discussed everything, and she was down to book. Uh, and she was uh, prepared to book me all day. With uh, for, and and I know back back uh, back then I had a six hour package, not an all day package. She was uh, ready to buy the uh, the book, the six hour event six hours of uh, uh, of labor on site, so me being present, and the backdrop. So it was a big order for me at the time. I, I almost closed it, and I said, okay, I'm going to have to uh, check some things, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I went home. I discussed it with my parents uh, uh, and my wife. I was like, okay, I got this big, big moment, big opportunity. And... My gut is saying, I have to seize it. I have to seize it. So I did it. I bought, uh, I immediately ordered a professional photo booth. Um, I, um, I listed my business officially. And that's also when my business started. I set everything up, created a website, all of that within two days. And 
after two days, I, I called the client. I said, okay, let's let's go. Uh, let's get this booking done officially with, uh, uh, with, with the contract, so to speak. So it was official. I did the event. It was at the, it was a corporate event at a beach club. So it was on the beach itself. Uh, my my photo booth was inside. Uh, it was safe, and uh, it it was a success. It was a great success. Um, and it's not about this event specifically, but it's for me the the it's special because it it kind of was the start, the official start of the business. And from that moment on, my my business just skyrocketed because. Uh, I had far superior co uh, quality to push out to, to the viewers and uh, just the quality increased and I immediately saw it in my results. Mm. Love it. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, yeah, that, that one is very dear to me. And if I have to choose one event that I saw, which was like the most impressive, was an event that I had uh, at the end of February was a cousin of mine who was uh, who was getting married and um, she was getting married at a castle like like a true princess that she is um, it was a beautiful castle it was super big it was it was, it was perfect they had a, a giant flower wall uh, they booked us with with the prop tables um, they didn't take that many pictures but the pictures that I saw the the people were so happy they were having fun with the props, with the photo booth. I got lots of compliments, so that was a uh, uh, also a very special moment for me to show to see that I can I can come to places where I would have never ever gotten in my whole life, and um, and probably I'm still having something in the works, but the next time we speak, um, I will have I will have a story that will even top this one, but let me close it first, and then we'll talk about it next time. Love it, man. Yeah. Uh, you ever have to say no to a to a lead? I know we in, in business, everyone thinks, you know, every business owner is trying to take on every client. But has there ever been a situation, brother, where you're like, sorry, we can't do it? Whether it's someone asking for a discount that's unrealistic or just the logistics of an event not not really making sense or just the gut feeling. Believe it or not, guys, I, I do turn down jobs when I get a bad vibe from the client. I know I never talk about that, but like, I, I'm curious from your perspective, man. I know about, about my, my boys down here. I, I know how they feel about it, but uh, just wondering if you've ever had to say no. It's a very good question. I'm trying to think about it. I I probably have, but I don't recall it because um, I'm a greedy guy, man. Every every job that I can, can land, I'll try and do it. But now now that I think about it, I probably have turned down jobs, but not for the reasons the reasons that you mentioned, but probably because it wouldn't fit my schedule. Mm. If I have to be in one city at a specific time, I cannot take a job on at another location 50 miles uh, further. Uh, but that doesn't happen too much times. Um, the, the clients that do approach me, I, I'm pretty good at gauging what type of, of person I'm talking to. And it's usually, it's usually just fine. Um, Nobody's trying to finesse me. And once they see me, <laughs> I'm a big guy. And nobody's going to try and finesse me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I've, I've turned down that many jobs. And again, to get back on your point, if you can consistently get enough value, you, you won't even feel that you're losing bookings. Yep, 100%. Yeah. Well, I kind of want to go back and concentrate like, on the difference um, between like Holland and the U S cause I mean, it's my first time meeting someone from Holland, but uh, I wanted to see like, is there any difference like when at least in setups or props like here props here in, uh, in the U S uh, there's a lot of like Hispanic features. So like my like uh Modelo beer bottle or my Patron like tequila bottle, they're like fake props. Um, is there something like similar to you guys where like, you know, the Heineken beer is like, is that like popular with you guys or something? Oh my God. I love this question. Okay. So um, there is a huge difference, a huge difference. Um, the, the prop market as we, as we photo booth owners know it is, uh, is actually kind of untapped in Holland. There is almost no vendor 
outside of me that does the, the PVC props that we're used to in the US, um, probably because of the shipping costs and the taxes that you get put up extra. I am in the works with a, uh, with a supplier from the US to uh, create uh, liquor bottles like, like the Modelo beer or like, for example, Heineken. Uh, I will tailor made them to, uh, to specific bottles that we see on like every Indian party. So that way I can push it even easier. Uh, props, however, are uh, very difficult to push in, in, in Holland because, um, because of uh, uh, Temu and AliExpress. Um, uh, people want to save up uh, of, or, or save money where they can and they'll, uh, they'll order those cheap props from, from Temu for a couple of euros and it won't justify uh, spending money on a prop table for let's say 20 to 25 times more money hmm. so that's for me a very good opportunity to find a position and uh, maybe maybe lower my prices a little bit to be uh, to be booked more often with with the prop table what are your thoughts on a coat rack for props <laughs> i love it i love it oh, i ordered one oh. i ordered one of amazon no, i'm <laughs> just kidding i'm just kidding man i'm just kidding i'm playing with you. Oh, oh no it's you know what? Well, David, <laughs> um, for props, you know, and this is my 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 marketing buddy here. I'm always listening to Tyler. He's always like my marketing guru, if you will, because he's always giving me tips, man. And we did sit yeah. down because I told him about, about my props, and he's he pretty much started telling me like, don't just call them props. Just don't call it a prop table. Give it like, give it a cool name, like a a luxury prop table, or we got premium props. You got exclusive props, and um. I did see results after I started kind of like giving it like a special name because it makes you feel more better, like justifying like, man, yeah. I'm spending money on this. I better be getting some premium thing out of it. I guess what I learned about when that. I started I calling it that, good. it worked. I mean, this guy, this guy is great at marketing. I mean, he has a marketing background. He went to, you know, college for that as well. So I listened to uh, Tyler a lot. And I mean, maybe that's something you could try, but I mean, yeah. it's for me. Yes, I, I, I too, never thought I about it. I too got my degree in marketing and communication. So I'm pretty good at the, the talking and stuff, but I got to give my flowers to Drew here. I did learn that from Drew on his YouTube videos to call them exclusive props and stuff like that. So yeah, Drew, yeah. no, Tyler, I was, I, was gonna, I was gonna see if you could uh, tell Naveen your idea for your rental business about having a prop catalog and having the customers pick the props that are being brought to the event. Because before you said this, I don't know of any photo booth owner ever even showing the props because props sometimes change. And I, I love that idea. So yeah, if you really quick and just, just, I, I would love to hear your, Naveen's thoughts on this because Naveen seems very organized and, you know, being, bringing oh, value to his clients. So. Absolutely. So uh, Naveen, uh, uh, we've talked about this on previous podcasts. So I don't know if you heard me talk about this and we've also jumped in and talked about it on Instagram before when we go live sometimes. Um, what I, what I, my business does now, what my company does, me and my wife who run TKR events, uh, we give our, how we get, okay. So this is how we do. We have a professional DSLR camera. So one day, you know, I kind of got tired cause I bring all my stuff in my Jeep. I have like a, you know, small little mm -hmm. Jeep, four door Jeep. Um, you know, I don't have any, I don't have a truck or anything like that. So I kind of got tired of bringing all my bins, my whole prop box with me. Again, I'm one of those people where I don't like the having two tables of props, Obviously, you guys know I talk crap about the damn coat rack. I don't like that stuff. I just feel like it takes up too much space. It's cringy. So actually, I got to give props to my wife for this. What me and my wife decided to come up with is we took individual pictures on, you know, like we just got like a, like a small little board, you know, so it's like a nice background. We took individual DSLR pictures of our props, every single one we have, like from from the PVC props to our sunglasses, the hats. And then we went on online and we made like little boxes and we made like almost like yep. a catalog, like a catalog, like from a brochure, like we made like a catalog of each individual prop. And then we just put next to it, like one, two, three, four, five, you know, just little numbers in the top corner. Yep. We send it to our clients when we tell them, you know, this is the, the fun part after, you know, obviously we collect our deposit, we sign the contracts, we get all that stuff yeah. done. Then once, you know, they approve their templates and all that stuff, then we get to the fun stuff. Maybe like, maybe a week or two before the event, I say, Hey, by the way, you know, I, we want you to pick out of this prop catalog. So, you know, choose anywhere. I usually tell them from 10 to 15 because to me, 10 to 15 is all right. Okay. I could deal with that, but I like organization. I'm just like you. And I, I loved your story. I listened to it, this whole podcast and I'm just like you, man. I like that organization. I don't like to be too much. Nah. 
I have my customers now pick from this catalog. They're like, okay, I want number. I say, tell there's numbers in the corner, pick which numbers you want. So they'll be like, oh, I want number one. I want nine. I want seven. I want 10, 11, 12. You know, sometimes they'll go over 15 and I, I don't mind that. You know, I, I do want to make the customer yeah. happy. I, like you said before, you know, you want to be professional. You want to be nice and stuff like that. And I do. Um, so they'll pick and I'll just bring those specific props to the party. So then you're throwing the ball in their court. So if later on at the end of the event, like you said, if they have any complaints, that's the one thing they can't complain about. They can't complain about, oh, the props you had weren't like good enough for us or something like that. Mm -hmm. You could throw the ball in their corner and say, well, you picked it out of our catalog. That's what you wanted. We brought the props that you asked for. So maybe let's say it's like a, a birthday party and there's going to be a lot of kids there, but you don't know that. Or maybe a wedding or something like that. There's a lot of kids there and you bring like those alcohol props that like that Hans was talking about. And maybe the family's not very alcohol. Like there's a lot of people because of religion or beliefs, they don't like that whole alcohol stuff. And yep. they, they get upset with you. Oh, but why'd you bring this to the party? Whatever. You know, I, I like to rather just have them pick if they don't want it, I'll, I won't bring it. And also it's obviously better for the photo booth owner thinking as a photo booth owner. Now, when I have to clean up and end the day and pack all my stuff, I just know I got to grab all those 15 props and just put them in there. Plus it keeps me, you know, if a kid, if a kid takes a prop off the table and walks to the dance floor with it, it keep you know having less you know i like drew says less is more having 10 to 15 props you can visually keep track of how yep. much you have rather than having a, two tables of 50 props if you if someone takes 10 of those things you're not going to know what went missing you know so what do you think about the catalog that i was talking about i love it man i i'm uh, why haven't i thought about it myself because uh, but actually in a way i did already planned about thinking let me let me uh, let me jump into that because um when i go when i'm going to invest in my in my website i want to have this whole um decision making process built into the website so they'll choose the package they'll uh, fill in the time they'll be able to select okay which background do i want or i don't want a background step three select these props i kind of had had it planned but i could i could already start doing it by what you said taking pictures put it on the website and actually putting the ball in their court i i couldn't have said it any better way and because they pick it themselves they plan their own idea so i yeah i, I really would like to have this so it'll be easier to sell because right now um and now I, I, I kind of catch myself doing it. Uh, I haven't really promoted the product well, if, if I look back on it, because I've only put on one uh, or one or a few uh, pictures of the entire set on the website. Um, and it could be a lot better because if I take individual pictures, it'll be clearly communicated to the, to the customer. Okay, I can select my own props and I can uh, I have a large selection from which I can choose and now it will be easier to justify the price so I love it I'm gonna and, steal it and to me it's more fun for them because they get to actually have fun with it like oh wow I yep. like I like that Mario mask oh I like those those like those Star Wars lifesavers and stuff like that and like like uh, Hans was mentioning how I call them exclusive props or I'll call them premium props it's because I feel like when you use those big terminology words, like like we were talking about the psychology of using nine props yeah. and stuff like that, when you're saying exclusive props, premium props, you're already kind of like outbeating your competition right there by saying those big words because they're like, oh, wow, these this company's offering me premium exclusive props. And then the other company just told me, oh, we're going to get you a prop table. So in their yeah. eyes, they get prop table, all oh, those little stick props with the tape on it and stuff like that. But when you're mentioning exclusive props, they're they're thinking like the bigger picture. I want to I want to say something here. I like the pick your prop idea and uh for for a very specific reason. I know look, I know online I seem like a nice guy, but when it comes to business, I'm very competitive. And my competitiveness in business has always driven me to be like I need to have more value. The more value my company is, the more people are going to go with me. So we're going to, I'm, I'm going to talk to my wife after this. We're going to change our website. We're going to do the pick a prop thing. But imagine if somebody is getting quotes, right? You got somebody who's getting married. They call five photo booth companies and you're the only company allowing them or even bringing up, pick your props. It, it, every time I, 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 like, I can't believe it's been this long. I need to get it done. But like the, the client picks their template. They pick their backdrop. Why aren't we doing it with the props? I don't know why. Yep. 
It hasn't. Been, it, it's like to me, it's one of those moments. It's like I feel so stupid for not thinking about it. It even it even, it even sounds catchy. Pick your prop. Like, Pick your prop. Yep. I don't know. I got to give my wife credit for that for on our end because I didn't think about it either until she said, you know, how about we let them? Because we the reason why she came up with that idea as far for on our end was that a customer kind of threw a little complaint saying that because we have you know a hat that said like beer or something like that. She yeah. didn't like that. So I was like, oh, okay, I took it away. She's like, oh, can you actually put this prop out? Can you actually put, she was being picky with the props that day. So what I did is I just took the whole box, put it on her son's table and said, hey, mm-hmm. birthday boy, come here, pick your props. And then I, oh. I thought, my wife thought about it and she's like, why don't we just from now on just take pictures of these props individually and show them beforehand so we don't have to bring this big box over here no more. Yeah. And then look, there's even maybe a, a, another way where maybe they don't want to pick every prop. Maybe you have pre-packed prop boxes like if it's like a, a quinceanera, right? You have the Spanish prop bundle with maybe more Spanish theme or more Hispanic theme props. Maybe you have the birthday bundle where, you know, they could just pick a bundle versus just generic old props. Yeah. You sure. know? But um, yeah, Naveen, I know I know Tyler has one more question here. I don't know if Hans has another question, but I did want to ask you one more thing here, man. Um, You do a lot of content on social media. I follow you and and... Um, Tyler, I, I don't think you've had a chance to uh, check his social media out, but he is in I'm his going video. To after this. I'm oh, going bro, to it's after it's this. really good. He gets on camera. Yeah, he gets, he gets on, on camera. Really, yes. well, really well <laughs> spoken. And um, I love that you use the text, the captions on your videos. Yep. Um, my question to you is, just this, you know, obviously I know your answer, but how 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 effective is that being in your videos and have you always done that? And can you, can you notice a difference once you started doing it? If you didn't always do it. Um, I love this question because I love talking about social media content. Um, I obviously, obviously I didn't do it at the, at the beginning. I, I learned how to do it. Um, in the beginning, I, I went to events and I started uh, recording two, three second clips pasting all together it took me hours hours after an event and of course you get faster the, the more events you do uh but i hated doing it i hated it um so i thought to myself okay um what what can i improve and i was also seeing low viewer accounts so it wasn't really rewarding or feeling like all right i'm making a difference uh, and i understood the more content the more relevance the more viewers i understand the game but um when uh, I one day I fell in this 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 uh, TikTok rabbit hole or uh, YouTube shorts rabbit hole, and the way, as I was scrolling, I, I caught myself um, stopping to uh, shorts on shorts where somebody was speaking and the text was being generated because I'm not English speaker, a native English speaker, but it's very easy for me to follow when uh, there's text on screen. I was like. Why haven't I thought about this before? So I went online, I started researching, and I found this app called Caption. Captions, duh. It's a uh, it's a paid service, um, but I'm happy to pay those uh, the 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 ten dollars a month that it costs. It's nothing, because now it uh, it um, it gives me the 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 opportunity to create a video. Uh, I do create my video in CapCut though. Uh, I just make the clips, I put them all together, I do the voiceover in, in CapCut, and I export the video to my phone, uh, I upload it in captions, um, then um, I let captions do its thing, I, it automatically uh, converts everything to text, uh, I pick a color that chooses, uh, or uh, I choose a color that matches the theme, uh, I, I do a spell check, um, AI generates the music, so it's also copy uh, copyright free, and I do one more checkup, and then I uh, I download it back onto my phone. I go to, I go into ChatGPT, I let it generate a caption, and boom, it goes out on all platforms. Love that, love it. Yeah, let me see if you guys can see this. Um, so you guys, obviously, I'm I'm linking Naveen's social media stuff down down below. Please go follow. Um, just to give you an idea here, man, this guy's consistent captions. Bro's using CapCut, I can tell. Like, bro, your your social media page, like, I get a lot of inspiration from you. So Thanks, man. I, I'm, Appreciate glad it. We got, I'm glad we got a chance to talk about the social media. And um, just really quick, you guys, raise your hands if you do content 
with yourself in the videos? I know there's four of us here. I'll raise it halfway. No, 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 no. <laughs> you put your hand, Hans. You put your hand down. You oh. put your. <laughs> How those balloons come up? Did you guys? See I don't that? know. I saw that too. <laughs> How did you do balloons? I'm just trying to bully. <laughs> what? That is it's so probably cool. because I'm on my iPhone, right? Oh, oh, that's what it is. It's the phone. Yeah. But but no, I'm just trying to bully Hans to do more content. Um. Yeah, do it with, with being being in the videos. Uh. Also, I, 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 no joke, TikTok is the perfect place for businesses to promote themselves and being in it. I think that's why we've had a lot of success for Photo Booth 101 and also too with, with our rent, one of our rental companies. Um, people just love, man. People just love seeing the person behind yeah. this, man. Yeah. It, 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 especially too, I, I know I sound like a broken record here, guys, but you know, if you're in your content, people feel more trusting in you, especially if they're going to give you a deposit, not seeing you also known as a retainer. I mean, um, but yeah, but yeah, that, that's all I had to say. I, I don't know if the fellas had any more questions with, uh, for you guys, uh, for you before we, before we hop off anything else you guys wanted to ask him. Yeah, uh, man. So you're, you're talking about drop-offs. I mean, uh, I don't know how yep. popular they are here, but I, I've been, uh, now that I talk to customers, I kind of try to push the drop offs just because it's more bang for the buck for me, more bang for the buck for the customer. Um, but uh, you kind of have to explain like, hey, not only is it a photo booth, but it, it could do boomerang, it could do gifts. Like, do you find yourself having to explain that to customers? Because uh, a lot of customers that I have sometimes are only used to like a photo booth where like, oh, you take a picture and it prints out and that's all they know. Do you have like to have to explain to the like, the customer how it works like how does how does your photo booth work or do or is that pretty popular do they know yeah I'm, I'm i'm kind of surprised about about this question because um my instruction on site takes one minute i uh i set up i go to the customer can i have a minute and we walk back to the photo booth uh i don't even touch the screen i let the customer touch the screen uh, I, uh, when, when they touch the screen, they get all the options. Um, I'll explain everything real quick and then I'll let the, um, the customer make a test f a photo or boomerang or whatever. Obviously I already tested uh, the system before. Uh, but yeah, um, it's pretty self-explanatory because boomerangs and photos, there are, yeah, kind of features that everybody are, uh, everybody's already familiar with in my experience. Mm. Okay, no, okay, then I guess it's just a problem here in LA. So, <laughs> oh, that's uh, Drew, you're muted. It's surprising. It's a big problem out here. <laughs> yeah, I was just agreeing yeah. with you. Yeah, there, there was one time where I literally had to uh, break down what a boomerang was. I'm like, it takes a burst of photos. And she goes, what is a burst? And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it. <laughs> The whole world, I don't think, is united on that front, man. For sure. I, I think, Yo, I think, I've I think, seen grandpas do do boomerangs, man. It's crazy. Yeah, no, not here, man. You, we, I have to take my time sometimes to explain it to mom or dad. I think the only ones that like kind of get it like right off the bat is like millennials and Gen Zs. And but yeah. like, other than that, like you know, I think I think, I think I think I could agree. New Jersey, we have that problem too, especially the older people, the the, the younger ones, the teenagers. Like when I do like the the like weddings like the for the younger crowd like a younger like 24 year old wedding or like a cantonera sweet 16 they understand it but once i do like those 40 year old birthday parties 50 year old birthday parties man i'm sitting in there all night trying to just show them hey my <laughs> photo booth does more than just photo like it does gif and they're like what's gif oh what's boomerang and i actually have to show them like move like this and they go and they actually do it they're like I'm like, oh my, I'm like, oh my god! I'm like, you didn't have to really just do this. Yeah, bro, they do it. <laughs> yeah, like this. You know, always, always find that kid that just wants to hang around the the, the photo booth and show that kid, and then they'll do it for you. <laughs> free, free, free employee, man. Yeah, you get a free You're employee. Smart. <laughs> hey, you want to stay at the booth all day? Okay, go ahead, go. Teach everyone how to do it. I'm gonna go sit over there. Exactly. <laughs> but Naveen, actually, my final question to you, and uh, you know, like I said, I love your organization. I love how you're very on. You're on your videos. I'm gonna check out your social media when Thanks, I get man. Off, when we get off the live. Uh, you know, off this uh podcast. Um, but my like I said, my last question to you is uh, what advice can you give to future entrepreneurs in the, going into the photo booth business, whether they're gonna do the 360, the mirror booth, the the iPad photo booth, 
What's your advice to them in 2024? Today's advice, if they're starting off and you're starting, you know, let's say a younger cousin or someone comes up to you and says, hey, Naveen, I'm inspired by your work. I want to get into this business. How do I do it? What advice would you give them today? Good. Perfect question. Perfect question to end to end the podcast with. But before we do that, Photo Booth is the name. Follow us on social media. And now let's get into the, this precious information. Okay, so you want to start a business this year, 2024. You want to make money. I can, uh, I can tell you how to make 1,000 euros this year without doing an event. And I, I thought about this answer because I got a questionnaire a few days ago. And I was like, okay, what is the best tip that I can give you? Of course, work hard, uh, dedicate yourself, be consistent, blah, 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 all the cliches. But if you want an actual valuable tip, every year there are two key dates for weddings. Those will be happening every year. This com might come as a surprise, but for example, in 2024, you have, you have two dates, which will be hugely popular for, for weddings, which is 2402-2024. So the uh, February, uh, uh, February 24, 2024, and uh, in April, again, 24, uh, April 2024, or 20 April 2024, three dates in, in 2024, which are very attractive, very, um, uh, how do you say the, the proper word, nice looking dates for on the wedding card, which are probably going to book for be booked for weddings. Yeah. If you're starting this year, you can already start your marketing machine, create a page, create promotions for next year and say, okay, on the 25th of May, I'm going to organize, uh, organize a special promo um, my packages are usually 2,000 euros or $2,000. I'm going to give you 1,000 thousand off if you book right now. Give me a 500 euro retainer and uh, the rest will be after the event. Mm -hmm. Boom. Close two events and you have $1,000 made without lifting a finger. Wow. wow. Bro, that. That's so funny you mentioned that. My wife and I got married um, 11, 12, 22, which is 1, 1, 1, 2, 2. It's so funny because we actually picked that day for that number. So he's absolutely yep. right. And I know Naveen is a social media creator because before he went into that whole answer, he you were thinking, let me shout out my company really quick before I give this information because this will be a clip. Am I right or am I wrong? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, hey, thank you so much. Uh, we I, I appreciate you. I know it's, what, me five too. Five about five o'clock over there. It's still early. Um, anything you guys want to say to our guests before we hop off? Thank you for the tips, man. Um, even though um, we you know teach and teach others, I also I'm always I'm always open to ideas, and I love these podcasts because I always even though I'm a host, I still learn from everybody. Yeah, so thank you for the tips. Absolutely, Naveen, you did great. I like I said, I can't stress it enough. I love your organization. You know, your words, you have very good wisdom uh, and your photo booth business, you know, is going to go very, very, very far in the next maybe, couple of months, not even a couple of years, couple of months. You're going to go very far, man. So yeah. keep it up, keep pushing and, you know, you work did. hard. Man. So I hope to see, Thanks, I, want to see I want to see you six months from now on the podcast again. And I want to see your progression. Done. Done. I know. Thanks, I guys. know. I, if, if I don't bring this up, someone's going to say something. You said earlier you had a big announcement. Oh. Yeah, let, let me get let me thank you guys first, and then I'll yeah. do the big a big announcement. Okay, Can't so wait. first of all, Drew, thank you so much for the uh, for the opportunity to be here. I appreciate it. I've been following you since before I started my business. I watch, I try to watch almost every podcast episode I can. Like I said, I spend a lot of hours in the car. I just put on the podcast and I just listen. Sometimes I even listen to uh, an episode multiple times. I always try to like. That's what you guys have to do. Like the video. Um, yeah, I cannot plug us enough. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you guys, um, all of the tips that you gave me over the over the years. Um, that's also a very good tip for every viewer, every listener. Always keep your ears open and be open to new ideas and new influences and try to put them into practice in your own way. And that, that way you create your own style, your own sauce, and that way you will definitely be a success. So. Everything 
that you see here today on on screen is a is a product of of you guys and uh, uh, and of course my own work as well. But yeah, I appreciate I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the opportunity. Man, pleasure, 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 pleasure. All right. So now for the big announcement, Photo Booth One Hundred and One exclusive. We were talking about props today, and um, there is one prop that has risen to uh, uh, risen in popularity in uh, in our household in uh, the last few weeks. So I'm very happy to announce that. What? No way! Congrats, bro. Hey, thanks, bro. We're wow. expecting our first child. Oh my child. god, dude! Congrats, uh, yeah. bro. That, that is insane. Dude, <laughs> I, I, let me finish the podcast with this uh, with this bomb, bro. Well, that for anyone cool. just listening, he just took out a prop, and it says "Dad to be." Yep. Anyone yeah, just it, listening and not watching? It's a boy, it's a boy right? You already know the gender, or you? Oh just... no, 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 no. We don't. We don't know the gender, right? But the other side is mom to be. Bro, congrats, man. Congrats. Dad, dude, God works in Love mysterious it. ways, man. I yes. I found out yesterday. My best friend of twenty five plus years is that him and his wife are also pregnant. So that's insane, man. Congrats. That's... Thank you, thank you, guys. Awesome, man. Yeah. What's uh any um. Any other things that people can follow you on, bro, before we end this? I know I'm going to link your yeah. website, your social media, any, you know, anywhere else where people can find you. Uh, yeah, the only way you can find me is on at photo booth. Uh, that means TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, doesn't matter. It's always the same or my website. Um, I think before we wrap it up. I do have one question for you guys. I, I forgot to ask it. Um, do you guys um, value Google reviews? Because here in, in Holland, those are very important in the decision-making of, of, a, of a customer or lead. How are, how are you guys uh, viewing those? 100%, man. Those are my, those are my favorite reviews. I, I, if people tell me if they could drop a review, I tell them, skip Yelp. Just give me Google. Yeah. And, and how do you collect it? I usually send them a link uh, directly to to the so literally uh Google my business provides you with a link yeah. that you can send to people yeah. and as soon as they click that link it will literally tell them to start typing you, they don't have to look for anything just start typing and okay. give them a start yeah there's and some... I... go ahead no, go ahead, David. Go ahead and how how do you collect the email addresses um Luma Booth gives you the the email addresses if they if they have them, yeah just for just for the the booker or all of the users all the users the well, unless oh, nice, you use, nice. unless you use phone number but yeah, yeah, yeah. you have yeah. one I way do it. yeah i do it the same way but the the i was working towards like uh, our website uh, i found a free tool online um and there are also paid versions as well that will um uh, those are like plugins and they will load in um uh, your google reviews onto your website and those really make a difference. I agree. Yeah, and I know a lot of people, I, I, that's been around for a while, but I know some people on their websites, they will screenshot the reviews and they post the ones on their website that look the more most favorable. Mm -hmm. me, me as a shopper, as a consumer, I can tell right away when it's not real. When it's a real plugin, you can actually see the, the reviews and not every review is just the best review, right? Yep. Like I like going to a website and just seeing someone put great company. Those are the real reviews. Yep. Those people that 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 they'll, they'll leave the review, but not knowing that you know the meat of it needs to be in the part that you're reviewing. But um, but yeah, uh, for me, Google Google is super important. Um, also, I like to ask the clients to do it after the event. Um, I'll send them. I'll be like, hey, can you leave a review? And if they don't, the next day I'll follow up. I'm like, hey, again, here's the link to all the photos, just in case you missed it. Um, great party. Please leave us a review. And I'm sending them the event link just to remind them like, Hey, like, don't forget, you know, we killed yep. it. Your event, everyone loved it. Yep. But, um, but yeah, Naveen, um, I, I, I'm not sure if you guys understood, but Naveen was saying he sends, he takes all the emails from everyone that used the booth and then asks them to leave a review. That's yeah. tough. I'm going to start so, doing that. Yeah. So Naveen, the way that we do it now is that we, we ordered on Facebook actually from someone who created it for us. Like it's like a little, uh, little stand. 
that goes on the prop that goes on the prop table. And again, another reason why I don't like so many props on my table. Mm -hmm. I have this little stand now with a QR code. There's two QR codes, one on the top that uh, is our Instagram page. So they could follow our Instagram. And then a bottom is another, another like little QR code where they scan it and it goes straight to our Google so they can review it. So what my wife's been doing because she gets a lot of like gift cards and stuff from her job for free. Like she'll get some gift cards and stuff like that. We save these gift cards, like Dunkin' yeah. Donuts. We'll get ones for like Dunkin' Donuts, Smart. Starbucks, you know, Amazon, stuff like that. And we'll, you know, save these gift cards because, you know, we don't really need to use $10, $20 yeah. gift cards. And we'll tell the customer, their customer, our customer, and obviously their, their guest, hey, if you leave us a review, Today, we're going to give out a $10 gift card to Dunkin' Donuts or to Starbucks or Amazon. Yeah. And we're, we're going to choose before the end of the night. We're going to pick one of you guys. And it's worked. Good pro cool. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's been working. We got like, well, a couple of nights ago, we got like 10 reviews just on one party. Dude. Beautiful. I love it. All right, you guys. Well, this is officially the longest podcast we have. So we just broke a record. Yay. Bunch That's of value bombs here. So, all right. You guys, thank, thank you, everyone, for watching. Again, make sure to subscribe. Go down in the description for all the info, everyone's profile, social media links. Also, if you want to get started in the photo booth business, photobooth101.com per usual. Place Thank to you be. Guys. God bless. See you soon.